and the glory days of the Soviet Empire. A world weightlifting champion and scientist and his team devised a special instant strength technique. When applied to experienced lifters, they instantly pulled their barbells a couple of inches higher. Later, the scientists learned that this technique, the loaded passive stretching, not only leads to instant strength increases, it has a cumulative long-term effect as well. This type of stretching is unlike any other type of stretching you have seen. It is not going to make you flexible. It is going to make you strong. Conventional stretching weakens you because it takes a spring out of your muscle. Loaded passive stretching is a very special type of stretching. You're not trying to relax the muscle. You're not trying to contract the muscle either. You're just stretching the muscle with the weight and you should feel a controlled strain in the belly of the muscle. One more time, a controlled strain in the center of the muscle. Here's a protocol. Stretch, strength stretch, your muscle for 10 seconds or so. The key words again are controlled strain. It will not feel comfortable. It shouldn't be. Then, rest for one minute. After one minute, perform your exercise. The squat, the deadlift, the throw. It's a very simple way to test the effectiveness of strength stretching. Go establish the baseline in the kettlebell throw or standing vertical jump. Do a few attempts. Rest for a few minutes. Do a loaded passive stretch, specifically a loaded passive stretch for your quads, as you'll see it later in the video. Then go try yourself again. You shall immediately see a strength increase. You'll throw further, you'll jump higher. The same thing will happen with your lifts like squats, deadlifts, presses, whatever. There's no hard and fast rule whether to use the strength stretching all the time, part time, cycled in and out, experiment. Drop me a line on the dragondoor.com forum and tell me which format worked best for you. Comrade, the kneeling bridge, a powerful bodyweight strength exercise, is the foundation of the leg power sequence in the strength stretching. Observe. Pain is good. Comrade, you need a training partner that you can trust. Observe. Lock the glutes. It's very important for protecting your back. And go back. Go back as far as you can comfortably handle it. You should experience tension in the center of your thigh. You should experience no discomfort in your back. Lock the glutes completely to protect it. Stay here for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, your partner is going to push you up. John, please push me up. See, the idea is not to lift yourself back up. The idea is stretch load the muscle passively. Comrade, you've got to understand if you're out of shape, if you're tight, if you're weak, the strength stretching is not for you. Loading the quads in that fashion could really tear you up if you are out of shape. Okay, two variations here. One is to emphasize the abs. To emphasize the abs, I'm gonna look way over. And the second variation, to emphasize the quads, I'm just gonna keep my body rigid. So, I'm gonna look way up, lock the glutes, abs tight, look up, going back, looking at John, staying here. I'm gonna for, stay here for 10 seconds. When I'm done, John, push up, please push me up. To work the thighs more, you might be able to go deeper. Obviously, don't go deep as somebody else does. Go as deep as you can do. Last thing you need is a torn quad. So, this time we're gonna keep this rigid, and we're gonna look down. Lock in, go back. See, now the stress is more in the quad. There's a lot less stress on the abs. So you stay right here, you stay here for 10 seconds. I don't wanna stay there for 10 seconds. John, please push me up. That's how we do it. Some variations. If you turn 
your thighs certain ways, you can emphasize certain type of action. For instance, for wide stand squats and deadlift, bring your knees in. That's where you're going to stretch load these muscles right here. Knees in, heels out, glutes locked, abs tight. Bring your tailbone and belly button close together. Go back, go back, go back. It's not for everybody, not for everybody's knees. Stay here. After a while, jump, please push me up. And you come up. For other applications such as kicks, throws, and punches, do it the other way. You turn your knees out. And as you turn your knees out, you're gonna stretch muscles through here. These muscles are very important. As you're throwing the punch, this comes in. So you don't want to dissipate the energy. So we stretch load these muscles. So here you are, glutes locked, abs locked, knees out, everything tight, go back, trust your partner, go back to the field of stretch, stay there for a while, stay tight, breathe shallow, enjoy the pain. After 10 seconds, John, please push me up. It's gonna hurt. Deal with it. To stretch your hips for squats, for deads, for throws, for jumps, you gotta watch your P's and Q's there. You can't overstretch your back, that's important. You gotta focus the stretch load on your hips, specifically higher hamstrings and the glutes. And here's how we're gonna do it. First of all, note that I had my toes turned slightly in. What does it do? It stretches the hips a little bit more. Second, my knees stay slightly bent. Why? Because I'm not trying to emphasize the hamstrings function of the knee flexion. I'm thinking of the hamstring as the hip extensor, so the knees stay slightly flexed. Then what I'm doing is I'm trying to lift the hips up. That's what I'm thinking. I'm not pulling in the box. I'm just thinking of lifting my hips as high as possible. As in all these stretches, breathe shallow. Feel the stretch load in the muscle. Stay for 10 seconds. Come out of it passively. If you're doing this for a jump, you can elevate your toes. What's the purpose? You're gonna pre-stretch the calves. It's about the only practical and safe way to do it anyway. The calves are so strong, pre-stretching them in the context of an isolation exercise can get pretty dangerous. This, that's pretty simple stuff. One more time, the stretch should be felt not in your back, but right here. If you feel some stretch in your lats, that's good. That's no problem. Lift the hips. Don't think of lifting the box. You don't have a box, stand on a bench. Stick a barbell underneath the pins in the power rack. Pull on the barbell as long as it's roll. Finally, just stand on a towel, pull on the towel. Improvise. Comrade, to stretch load your hips for a one leg exercise such as the pistol, you can do the same drill right here. What you gotta do is just ignore the other leg and load just one. Pistol power to you. Comrade, if your strength stretching, your hip for one-legged applications such as the one-legged squat or pistol. You can apply this to the hamstring stretch, the one where you lie on the floor. There is a big difference though. First of all, you gotta keep your knees slightly bent throughout. We're not trying to focus on the knee flexion. We're trying to focus on the hip joint, not the knee joint. Second, you keep the other leg down. And third, you wanna try to feel the tension right through here. So, you pull until you feel that tension. When you feel that tension, just hold it there for 10 seconds. 
Don't try to fight it. Don't try to relax your muscle. Just feel the tension and stay there. That's all. One drill to build your rotational power is the chair twist. Observe. You gotta sit upright, wrap your legs around the chair, pull with the arms. Don't use your waist to pull. Don't use your hips to pull. Remember, it's loaded passive stretching. Sit upright, pull with the arms, rotate, feel the stretch, feel the spiral stretch in your hip and your waist. Then go out there and throw some stuff. Another way to build rotational power is the Russian twist. Observe. Keep your arms straight. Have your partner hold your hips down. And feel the stretch load across your waist, across your hips, for 10 seconds. Once again, did I say arms straight? I said arms straight. When you're done, let the weight down and float right back up. And then go to a three punch. Throw your kick. Throw the disc as whatever you want to do. You'll have more power. Comrade, to strength stretch the lats, you must round your back, let your shoulder blades kick out, and push hard with the legs. That's what you gotta do. It looks a lot like uh, the way arm wrestlers load up. Their lats are really flared. So here's how we'll do it. Grab something sturdy. We're using the taps rack right here from tacticalathlete.com. Use your legs. You can keep them even. You can keep them uneven, whatever it is. Kick out your shoulder blades and push hard with the legs. Flare the shoulder blades hard. You should really feel that stretch in the lats. And you gotta hold that for the count of 10. Feel that really hard stretch in the lats, really hard stretch. Flare them right in the belly of the muscle. That's gonna make you strong on the pull-ups. <laughs> Comrades, if you got the technique of the kettlebell clean and press mastered, this stretch is going to strengthen your press. It's really difficult to stretch your deltoid usually, but this thing gets it done. Make sure that you do not push hips forward or lean back like you would for kettlebell sport jerks. We're not trying to rest the weight on your hip. We're trying to let the bells hang down and stretch the deltoid. This hand is spotting you. Your abs are tight and your glutes are tight to protect you. Protect your back. Enjoy the pain. Enjoy the power. Obviously, comrade, you can do this drill with a single kettlebell if it's heavy enough, and like I said, don't push it. Until you're pretty experienced with kettlebell lifting, don't take two kettlebells. The deltoid is one muscle you can strength stretch for pressing power. The triceps is the other. Comrade, keep your elbows close. Don't flare them. Stay right here, feel the stretch in the try. Lean forward. Be ready to drop the kettlebell if you must. Here's one safe way of getting rid of it. Right here. One more minute and then press heavy. <music> to strength stretch your triceps using your body weight, you need a power rack pin. Make sure power rack is sturdy and stable, or a low bar, something along those lines. You get your hands planted like this, with a thumbless grip, make sure your elbows never flare. Your elbows flare, the triceps does not get a workout, the shoulders may get hurt. Observe.
You can also do the one arm version of the same stretch, where you spot yourself with the other hand. Observe. Know that your abs must be tight, your glutes must be tight to protect your back. If you don't know quite how to do that, here's how. Here's how to do this drill without tightening your abs. No, you're not gonna get as much effect this way, but it is safer. Enjoy the pain. To strength stretch your bench press and push up muscles, set the pin in the power rack about your waist level or slightly higher, wrap a towel around and you'll find out shortly why you need a towel and get in this position, observe. Dip down slightly, get the bar fairly low and now what you need to do, use, use your weight, bring the shoulders down, now force your chest open as much as possible. You'll feel a quite painful stretch in your chest and shoulders. Force it open, force it open, really tight, really tight. You're not gonna like it. That's okay. Comrade, there's pain and there's pain. There's a pain of intense stretching and there's pain of injury. Don't overstretch, don't get stupid. If doing it in this setup with a power rack pin is too much for you, get a cambered bar, cambered bar for the bench press. It's a long bar that's got a little bit rounded dip in the middle. You can set it in the power rack. The dip is gonna go around your waist and you're gonna limit the range of motion. See so this way, push your elbows under, force your chest to open, the same thing. It's all safer. So don't get stupid now. You got a long strength career ahead of you. Comrade. To strength stretch the biceps, perform the gymnastic exercise, skin the cat. The same drill is excellent for stretch loading the shoulders, your deltoids, for parallel bar dips, for the dips. The dips themselves, even though they seem like a natural choice for a stretch, it's not a good strength stretching exercise. Too easy to get hurt. This one though, great for dips, great for the biceps. Observe. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi. It's good. Pull heavier, squat more, jump higher, throw further, hit harder, press bigger. Strength stretching is not about flexibility, it's about strength.